morning. I would like to welcome you all for the keynote session of today. We have a distinct... Good morning, in progress. Good morning. I would like to welcome you all for the keynote session of today. And I would like to introduce a distinguished guest for today's keynote speech, Professor Masoneri Hamada. Professor Hamada is internationally recognized as an authority for the analysis and mitigation of earthquake and tsunami disasters. He had engaged in the earthquake resistant design and construction of bridges, dams, ports, and harbor structures and nuclear power plants. He started his career at Taisei Corporation and worked there about 15 years after receiving Master of Engineering at University of Tokyo. He continued his career at Tokai University and in Civil and Environmental Engineering Department about 10 years, and then he continued his career in Waseda University in Tokyo from 1994 until his retirement. He conducted researches on, researches on earthquake and tsunami resistance structures and contribute, contributed to development of technologies and strategies for natural disaster mitigation. He also carried out investigation into the damage caused by natural disasters in the world and based on the result of investigations recommended the practices for disaster reduction for the governments and local societies. He served as president of many societies. For example, he served as president of Japanese Society of Civil Engineers, Institute for Social Science Society, Japan Association for Earthquake Engineering, and he established cooperative and collaborative relationship with experts and researchers in overseas countries in order to reduce the natural, natural disasters. He chaired the Committee on International Cooperation for Natural Disaster Mitigation as a member of the Science Council of Japan and issued the recommendations concerning basic <laughs> strategies for international cooperation by Japan in the field of disaster prevention. As the president, he established a non-profit organization of Engineers Without Borders Japan after the 2004 Sumatra earthquake and tsunami. He has been supporting the restoration and reconstruction works and natural disaster education by dispatching senior engineers and experts to the areas affected by natural disasters. One of the specific topics of his research in earthquake engineering field is soil liquefaction and its induced large ground displacements. He promoted an internationally joint research on this theme and developed the design method and construction technologies to protect the foundations of civil engineering, structures and buildings against liquefaction and ground displacement. He authored and co-authored five technical books and more than 100 academic papers and applied the research results in the practice of the mitigation of earthquake disasters. I first met Professor Hamada in the United States when I was a PhD student at 1995. We have been in contact since then, and I know him very well with his research and his excellent personality. He's a father to his students and support all researchers around and support the activities related to disaster mitigation around the world. And now I would like to welcome Professor Hamada for his keynote speech. Floor is yours, Thank Professor you. Hamada. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Toplak, for your kind introduction. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Masanari Hamada. I am very glad to 
to given to be given this opportunity to deliver my keynote speech at this memorial conference. I would like to express my highest appreciation to the chairman and all of the concerned people of the organizing, organizing committee. Japan and Turkey are both earthquake disaster prone countries, and the two countries have continuously cooperated for the reduction of earthquake disasters over a half century and have created close relationship in earthquake engineering and seismology field. I hope that my keynote speech at this conference will be one of the new steps of further cooperation and collaboration between two countries for reduction of natural disasters in the world. Thank you. We will proceed with the presentation now. Okay. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Masanori Hamada. I am very glad to be given this opportunity to deliver my keynote speech at this memorial conference, the sixth international conference on earthquake engineering and seismology in Turkey. I would like to express my highest appreciation to the chairman and all of the concerned people of the organizing committee. Japan and uh, Turkey are both earthquake disaster prone countries and the two countries have continuously cooperated for the reduction of earthquake disasters over a half century and have created close relationship in the earthquake engineering and the seismology field. I hope that my keynote speech at this conference will be one of the new steps of further cooperation and collaboration between two countries for the reduction of natural disasters in the world. The title of my speech is Measures for Enhancement of Earthquake Resilience of Waterfront Industrial Parks. During past earthquakes in the world, industrial parks in the waterfront areas have been repeatedly damaged. Heavy damage to industrial parks by future earthquake and tsunamis will seriously affect the living and the safety of the people, as well as the worldwide economic activities. The enhancement of earthquake resistance of industrial parks is one of the most urgent subjects around highly urbanized areas, such as Tokyo, Osaka Bays in Japan. Therefore, a national project has been carried out by the Japanese government for the reinforcement of the waterfront industries all around Japan since 2014. My speech consists of these four topics. I will firstly introduce earthquake tsunami caused damage to industrial parks during past earthquakes. Secondly, I will talk about earthquake damage assessment of industrial parks around the Tokyo Bay. The third topic of my presentation is on the development of measures for enhancement of earthquake tsunami resistance of industrial parks. And lastly, I will briefly touch upon the policies and the practices of Japanese government for the disaster reduction of the industrial parks. There are three main causes of damage to industrial facilities during past earthquakes. The first cause of damage is soil liquefaction, and it induced large ground displacement in soft man-made island reclaimed from the waters. Most of industrial complexes has been constructed on reclaimed island 
in waterfront area for the import of raw materials and the, for the export of the product. The second cause is a strong earthquake ground motion amplified by soft reclaimed ground. The third cause is flooding by inundation of the tsunamis and the destructive wave force on structures. These are examples of damage to oil and pet uh, chemical plant by soil liquefaction. The soil liquefaction tilted and subsided a number of tanks for storage of, storage of oil, high pressure gas, and petrochemical product. The upper photos show the inclination and the subsidence of tanks, while the lower photos show breakage of oil protection wall. The Upper right hand side photo shows a clear evidence of the occurrence of the soil liquefaction. The liquefied sand boiled out a ground fissure. During 1995 Kobe earthquake, a large areas of Mammed Island liquefied and the damage port and harbor, harbor facilities. The brown colored ground surface of upper left side photo shows the liquefied sand which boiled out of the ground. This photo shows that whole area of the man-made island had liquefied. Key walls largely moved toward the sea by the increase of earth pressure of the liquefied soil. Most of the loading facilities in Kobe port collapsed and largely inclined as shown in the lower photos and completely lost their functions, which seriously impact on the economic activities after the earthquake, as well as on the restoration and the reconstruction works. Soil liquefaction induced ground displacement have also caused a serious effect on the waterfront industry facilities during past earthquakes. The left hand side air photo was taken two days after Kobe earthquake over a man made island in Kobe, where the tank yard had been constructed for storage of petrochemical materials and high pressure gas. The yellow colored ground surface of the photo shows the sand boiled out of ground and the pile on the surface with a thickness of about half meters. This photo shows that the whole area of the tank yard had liquefied. The vectors in right side figure show the displacement in the horizontal direction of key walls and the ground surface. The numerals at the top of the vectors show the magnitude of the displacement in centimeters. The key wall moved toward the sea three to four meters, and the whole area of the tank yard also displaced two to three meters toward the sea. In this tank yard, a pipeline was ruptured by differential ground displacement and a large amount of liquefied propane gas leaked. Valid pipes were also ruptured by liquefaction in this ground displacement. There are two kinds of ruptures. One is caused by the tensile ground strain, and the another is by compressive ground strain. The upper photos are examples of ruptures by tensile ground strain, and the lower photos show the buckling of buried pipes by compressed ground strain. The long period earthquake ground motion, which has several second dominant period, caused the slushing vibration of the content oil in the floating roof type tanks, 
which triggered tank fires. During 2003 Tokachi Oki earthquake in northern uh, island of Japan, two tanks of a diameter of about 40 meters fired and burned down at an oil, refin oil refinery plant. The upper right side figures shows the earthquake ground motion recorded at two locations, Tomokomai and Hiro. The ground motions at the Tomokomai contained long period component of six to eight seconds. These long period vibrations were not observed in the record at Hiro, where the short period vibration were dominant. The difference of the dominant period resulted from the difference of the ground condition at two locations. Tomokomai is located on soft sedimentary ground of a thickness about two kilometers. On the contrary, Hiro is located on hard rock. The thick sedimentary ground at Tomokomai amplified the long period earthquake ground motion. The diameter of two fire tanks are 30 to 50 meters, and the natural period of stretching vibration of content oil are estimated to be about six to seven seconds, close the dominant period of earthquake ground motion observed at the Mokomai. This long period ground motion induced Thrashing vibration of oil in, in the tank. During many past earthquakes in the world, thrashing vibration and the overflow of oil from tanks and the large fires had been reported. During 1999, Kojari earthquake in Turkey, four floating type oil tanks of 20 to 30 meter diameter were fired by long period earthquake ground motion. The 1964 Niigata earthquake in Japan caused fires in five crude oil tanks. The fire continued for two weeks because the fire fighting was difficult due to the flood in the neighborhood oil plant by the inundation of the consequent tsunami. Besides the long period earthquake ground motion, the ground motion of a short dominant period, less than one second, have also caused the damage to oil and gas tanks due to strong earthquake ground motions amplified by soft reclaimed ground. During 2011, East Japan earthquake, 17 spherical tanks of liquefied propane gas is in Tokyo Bay were collapsed and exploded. The fire continued about one week because the firefighters could not approach the neighborhood, the burning tanks. The firefighting was conducted from the sea by fireboard. Steel fragment of exploded tanks with a length of 1.5 meter and a width of 80 centimeters scattered and dropped in residential area, six kilometer away from the plant. The direct cause of the collapse of the tanks is a rupture at the connections of the steel braces caused by dynamic inertia force of tanks and the, the content. During 2000 East Japan earthquake, the tsunami caused damage to interstate parks. In Sendai port, a big fire was induced at an oil refinery plant. The cause of the direct ignition of the fire was not identified because all of the workers of the plant were absent for the evacuation from the tsunami. It is supposed 
that tank lorries were flooded by the tsunami and hit the oil pipeline. The lower photos shows a driftage of a fuel tank from the fishery port and the consequent fire on the sea surface. I'll move on to the next topic of my presentation, earthquake risk assessment of the industrial parks around the Tokyo Bay. In the waterfront areas of the bay, there are 14 thermal power stations, three IM manufacturing plant, eight oil refineries, and the three gas production plant. All of these major energy industries are constructed on man-made island by reclamation and have a high risk of damage by soil liquefaction at its induced ground displacement, as well as by tsunami. The most of the source fuel for these industries, crude oil, natural gas, have been imported from overseas countries. The square zone is the predicted source area of the northern Tokyo Bay earthquake of a moment magnitude of 7.3. The probability the occurrence of this earthquake within next 30 years predicted as 70%. If these major energy industries are fatally damaged by the future earthquake, the economy of the countries will be in crisis and the safety of the regional people will be seriously affected. Most of this man-made island around the Tokyo Bay and the their key walls have not enough resistance against the liquefaction because this island had been constructed before a 1964 Niigata earthquake, which firstly let us recognize the phenomenon of the soil liquefaction and its induced damage from the viewpoint of the engineering. Therefore, no countermeasures has not been taken for industrial facilities on this man-made island against soil liquefaction. Right. This is one example of assessment of liquefaction potential and the horizontal displacement of key walls and ground surface of a man-made island in Tokyo Bay. It was assessed that the thickness of liquefied soil would be more than 10 meters and the key walls would move 7 meters towards the sea. The lower photos, the tanks, constructed in a close distance from the key walls. The tanks might be ruptured by predict predicted ground displacement and large amount of oil chemical product might leak into the sea, which result in a big fire on the base surface. Right. The Upper photo shows the floating roof tanks at an oil refinery plant in Tokyo Bay. More than 600 floating roof type tanks have been constructed on Mamed Island around the bay. These tanks contain crude and heavy oil. The thrashing vibration of the content oil due to the long period of ground motion induced by these three big earthquakes along the Pacific coast was analyzed. It was predicted that the oil would overflow from 60 tanks among the total 600 tanks. By the vibration, by the thrashing vibration and by ruptures of tanks due to soil liquefaction, it can be supposed a large amount of crude and heavy oil would flow into the bay and consequently 
huge fires may be ignited on the base surface in the wider area. Two figures show the result of a simulation of diffusion of crude oil in Tokyo Bay. Find a large amount of oil flow into the bay. It was assumed that 12,000 kilolitre crude oil spills into the bay from the Kawasaki Industrial Parks on the west side of the bay, and that wind speed was 5 meter per second, which is the mean speed of over year. As shown by left-hand side figure, in the summer season, the crude oil will reach the opposite side of the bay within about three days by southwesterly wind. The right-hand side figure shows that in the winter season, the crude oil drifts to the mouth of the bay. In, t in these two figures, the thin lines show the daily wakes of medium and large sized ships excluding small fishing and leisure boat. About 200 ships are navigating Tokyo Bay every day. If the spilled oil spread over the sea lanes as shown in this figure, the maritime traffic function in Tokyo Bay would be paralyzed. Ships would be prohibited from the navigating of the bay until the spilled oil are collected. The technical committee for the assessment of the impact of the spill out of the oil in Tokyo Bay, organized by the Japanese government, has estimated that collection of the spilled oil will take approximately two months. If this estimation is realized, the impact of accident will be serious and critical for the economy of the nation as well as in the world. Next topic of my presentation is the reinforcement of key walls and the protection of tanks against soil liquefaction. The upper left side figure shows new steel sheet pile driving to prevent large displacement of key walls and the ground of Mammed Island. The upper right side figure is reinforcement of existing key walls by additional ground anchors. The lower left one is grouting into foundation ground of tanks to prevent subsidence and inclination by soil liquefaction. The lower right hand side figure shows a measure to prevent liquefaction of foundation ground of tanks. In this method, the groundwater level is lowered by pumping the groundwater inside the areas surrounded by water cut off wall. The effectiveness of countermeasures has been examined by model tests under centrifuge condition. Left side shows a method by driving new sheet pipes behind the existing walls. The second figure shows a countermeasures against soil liquefaction by cement mixing grouting. The right side figure shows the method called the group piling method, whereby the steel piles are driven in two rows with an interval six to four times of the pile diameter. It is expected that the pile group stop the flow of the liquefied soil. This is a one of test results. The vertical axis of this figure shows the horizontal displacement on the model ground surface. And the horizontal axis is a distance from the existing keywords. This figure show, showing a clear effectiveness of each countermeasures to reduce the displacement of the key wall and the gland. Particularly in pile group method, 
is much effective to stop the flow of the liquefied soil, even when the driving distance of pile is four to six times of the diameter of piles. I would like to recommend the pile group method for the viewpoint of the construction cost and the period. It is generally difficult to perfectly protect the waterfront industries against the tsunamis of more than 10 meter height, since most of industrial facilities are located out of doors. The upper left-hand side of the figure shows assessment of the flood depths by inundation of predicted tsunami at industrial complexes along the Tokyo Bay. The water depth was predicted to reach 5 meters. A large number of facilities were flooded and some of them float out. The upper right hand side figure is one of proposed measures to protect tanks against drifting objects and to prevent lift up the flood by the flood water. However, it seems not to be realistic because there exist numerous tanks to be protected along the coast. The lower photo and the figures are an example of reinforcement of coastal dikes by driving sheet piles into the dike, which can be expected to prevent the total collapse of dikes and to reduce the wave force of the tsunami. This measure was realized in Kochi City, where it was predicted to be hit by a huge tsunami with a height of more than 20 meters. This type of reinforcement of coastal dikes can ensure that the dike survive after the attack of the tsunami and uh, support the restoration and the reconstruction work of the areas flooded by the tsunami. The huge tsunami induced by 2011 East Japan earthquake caused unprecedented catastrophe to the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. Some constructions for the measures have been realized to protect existing nuclear power plants against future tsunamis. The Hamaoka nuclear power plant is located in the source areas of the earthquakes along the Pacific coast, near to the highly populated areas such as Tokyo, Nagoya, and Osaka. The height of the tsunami estimated at the 15 meters at the coastline of the plant. The upper right hand side figure shows the measures already realized at the plant. Power supply and pumping vehicles for cooling of the nuclear reactors at the emergency were moved to the higher elevations to prevent damage of, by flooding. The lower left side photo shows the construction of a steel frame wall of a height of 18 meters along the coastline. And the right side figures in installation of the water flood doors for reactor building. I will move on the final topic of my presentation, the policies and the practices of Japanese government for earthquake tsunami risk reduction of industrial parks. The cabinet office government, Japanese government, have been warning the simultaneous occurrence of three large earthquakes along the Pacific coast of the western Japan. Tokai earthquake magnitude 8.0 Tonankai earthquake 8.3, the Nankai earthquake 8.4. However, recently the Cabinet Office of Japanese Government revised the source areas 
of these three large earthquakes as shown by red dotted line in the figure. The total magnitude of these earthquakes is estimated 9.0, and the probability of the occurrence this newly predicted earthquakes was estimated as 80 percent for the next 30 years. In 2013, the Diet of Japan enacted fundamental law for national land, land resilience against large earthquakes along the Pacific coast and the northern Tokyo Bay earthquake in the metropolitan area. The principles of the law are to save human lives, to prevent critical damage to functions of the nations and the local communities. And the third principle is to minimize the loss of people's properties and public infrastructures. And the last principle is to is smooth recovery and reconstruction. The enhancement of earthquake and the tsunami resistance of industrial parks is related, related to the second principle. Based on the fundamental law, the Ministry of Economy of the Japanese government has promoted a national project for earthquake tsunami resistance enhancement of industrial parks along the Pacific coast and the metropolitan area. Earthquake tsunami risk of industrial parks was assessed against earthquakes and based on the risk assessment, the enhancement has been carried out. The Japanese government has prepared a national budget of about 16 billion yen per year. The two-thirds of the total construction cost is shouldered by the public money and the residual is paid by the industries. At the end of my presentation, I would like to introduce five recommendations for more active promotion of earthquake tsunami resistance enhancement of industrial parks, which are proposed to the government by my research group. The first one is that in addition to reinforcement, each industrial plant, the earthquake tsunami resistance enforcement in larger areas, such as whole areas of Mammed Island, including three areas, is essential because the disaster at one plant may extend to the neighboring plant and affect wider areas. To achieve the, this larger area enhancement, strong leadership by central and local government is required to lead a group of the industries. For the enhancement of the disaster resilience of the larger areas, more public investment is also required for private properties of industries, particularly for small industries, most of which has not enough financial investment. In order to protect maritime transportation of canal, the reinforcement including private coastal dikes of industries is necessary. The fourth recommendation is a risk information sharing among industries, local communities, and people for the promoting resilience in larger areas. The assessment of the impact of the paralysis of industrial complex on the national and the world economy is also required for the national policy making. This is the end of the, my presentation. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you, Professor Hamada, for this comprehensive keynote presentation on a very critical topic. You know, these industrial parks, industrial facilities, ports and harbors, 
they not only affect uh, economically, social, the society, but also regarding environmental issues. Thank you again. And now uh, I open the floor to the questions from the audience. Uh, Professor Akbash, can we get the microphone, please? We have a question here. To the front seat. Good afternoon, uh, Professor Hamada. This is Dr. Akbaş, Department of Civil Engineering, Gebze Technical University. Thank you very much for this very interesting and challenging presentation on the technological disasters on waterfront parks. Uh, my question is that uh, we know that these uh, natural disasters triggered by uh, technological disasters or natural hazards triggered by technological disasters are causing damage all over the world, including Turkey and Japan. And you also discuss about the Japanese government pol policies on improvement, on improving the waterfront parks, parks uh, performance when subject to strong ground motions. How about the existing waterfront facilities? Uh, does the Japanese government enforce the existing facilities to improve the, uh, to, or to meet these objectives, or these objectives are just for the new facilities to be constructed. Thank you. Okay. Okay. At the pre present time, the target of. Uh, national project is focused on the uh, petrochemical plant. But uh, they, are, they are going to expand the reinforcement to an, another in industries, such as uh, uh, power generation and the steel uh, manufacturing. But uh, it takes a long time and it takes a lot of money. But the, but the Japanese government is, uh, has a strong intention to expand the, this, this uh, national project to other industries. Is that uh, my, oh, yeah, my thank, question? Thank, thank you very much, uh, Professor Ahmad. Yeah. Any more questions from the audience? Well, I have a question, Professor Hamada. Yes. So I am a you know, first-hand witness of that you pioneered international cooperation uh, throughout your life. And I know you organized many international workshops on topics related to earthquake engineering. And we know earthquakes do not rec recognize country boundaries and we have many common issues in the world. How do you see in what direction international cooperation should progress regarding earthquake engineering topics? It's very difficult to, <laughs> to answer this question. Mm. We have to continuously uh, keep international collaboration. Continuous, re continuous action is very important. And uh, I'm a, 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 a little aged, but uh, I have to transfer the action to the next generation, like you, okay? Uh, we held international conference many times eh, between J 
Japan and Turkey, Japan and the United States, and Japan and China. But uh, for to, in order to hold the international conference, it is necessary as a great effort to con continue and hold the relationship is necessary. So most of the university people has not, not so strong interest in the uh, cooperative research works among the countries. But it, it takes a time and the money. So uh, uh, Jap Japanese government has to prepare for promotion of international cooperation, particularly in the research field. We, I, I held the uh, uh, International Lifeline, Lifeline Earthquake Engineering Conference, okay? uh, maybe 10 times or 15 times, but that stopped because of the lack of the uh, financial basis, basement. Is my answer is okay for okay, you? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope, you know, uh, these kind of uh, supports on, especially on international collaboration will continue. And we thank you for uh, your support on this particular issue to promoting this uh, throughout your life as well. And uh, with that, actually, uh, maybe we can conclude the, uh, this session. And we thank Professor Hamada again for his wonderful uh, keynote speech. And I know uh, personally, actually, he wanted to be here uh, personally to make the presentation and to be in touch with us. And we would be very delighted to have you here, actually, if the conditions were suitable. But uh, unfortunately, uh, we couldn't achieve that. At least uh, it is still very uh, good to have you here. Very nice to have you here online. And thank you very much for your participation. Thank you very much. I hope to see you in person in near future as well. Thank you. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. As far as I know, the next session will start here. And we can, is, is there a break or we just continue actually? Okay, no break. Okay.